In the cold of the silvery night, guided only by a flickering light, now we tried pushing trucks with all of its might. The air was still as they chuffed up the hull, approaching the branch that would see their kill. Too late to realize their blunder, the trucks tore them asunder, and they were thrown to the marsh and dragged them under. There was no one for miles to hear them yell, alone and terrified they quickly fell, grasped by the tentacles of a watery hell. Some nights in the darkness you can hear their call, crying out for someone to stop their fall, but no one can help them, no one at all. Many years ago, in the high hills of Sodor, two scrap merchants were out on the rob, stealing guardrails from an old iron bridge and a small mineral railway, serving several quarries. <laughs> well, 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 what have we got here? Ooh, a lovely bit of iron this one, don't you think? <laughs> I think I'll just get a bunch of that. <laughs> Are you sure this is right, Terry? Stupid sausage. Always closing down soon, son. But at least I've only got a few more months. It's all over. <laughs> We're looking at it this way. We're doing them a favour, aren't we? Helping them with all the discount. <laughs> and if we make a little profit on the side, no one's got me being any wise, are they? <laughs> Never entirely profitable, the railway had descended into a slow, steady decline, with poorly maintained locomotives running on rickety old track. The bridge was no exception to this. The men took what they came for and left. Little did they know what they were going to be responsible for later that evening. The last train of the day made its way across the old iron bridge. The engine collected its load of stone and started back, propelling the trucks as it went. The first truck hit a snag in the rails. Without the guardrails to prevent a full derailment, it lurched off the bridge. The engine braked as hard as it could, but the weight of the loaded truck was too much. The load scattered across the buggy marsh from below, and the entire train plunged helplessly beneath the surface. No one heard their cries for help. They were miles from anywhere, and by the time the engine was discovered to be missing a few days later, the marsh had flooded, and he and his crew had vanished without trace. The line closed a few months later as predicted. But in the subsequent years, a new source of stone prompted a reopening. The thin controller sent Duncan, Rusty, and Peter Sam to help with the rebuilding. As well as re-establishing links with the oak quarries, the initial work consisted of clearing branches and undergrowth. Along the same section as where the old iron bridge still stood. Duncan complained bitterly about it, and banged trucks furiously around the yard. Shut the silly trucks in a good yard. The thing control just wants me in the way. I never wanted to come here in the first place. Oh, Duncan, the way you behave, he'd have been better off not to have sent you at all. You've spilled more than enough rubbish from those trucks. 
And that just means more work for the men. This is supposed to be your job. I could pull more trucks from here to there than either of you two. Duncan, it's not my job. It's called teamwork. We're all taking it in turns to shunt in the yard. Aye. And I've had enough of shunting. I want to go for a run. Peter Sam was making his way back to the shunting yard with another rubbish train before heading back to the quarries. Hmm, the gauge is getting low. We'll stop at the horse and not have a bit of a train. Ah, let's make it quick. Duncan will throw another strop to the light. Yeah, I'll turn a hang up to him. I think I'll be glad I'm alone. The trucks being used for the rubbish trains were old and worn. The thin controller had decided to give them one last reprieve before sending them off the scrap. The workmen were warned not to overload them, but quite often needs must. As a result, Peter Sam felt a terrible shaking tugging on his coupling between himself and the first truck. All of a sudden, it happened. Oh, what's happening? Yeah, oh, crumbs. The wretched trucks are broken free. The guard breaks hard, but knew his efforts would do little good. He leapt from his van into the bushes by the side of the line, watching helplessly as the truck spun out of control and hurtled down the line. He gave chase for a few hundred yards and then watched them clatter into one another on the old iron bridge. Plunging into the depths of the margin below. I sure believe it. Where did they go? I. I don't know. Duncan will never let me hear the end of this. Yeah, I'll never mind, Duncan. Wait till the thing controller finds out. The foreman said that you agreed that the trucks would be able to carry that amount. You're all at fault here, Peter Sam. But those trucks should have been secured on that hill. You'll be shunting here for the duration. Duncan can start hauling trains early instead. Finally! It wasn't my fault, sir. Uh... I want no excuses, Peter Sam! Just be grateful you weren't attached to those trucks. Unlike the last engine that lost its train on that bridge. Well, well, well. Peter Sam, the perfect engine, runs out of luck at last. <laughs> That'll come back to haunt you, you know, lad. You're the stuff of the ghost. I wouldn't joke about that if I were you, Duncan. Ah, uh, don't tell me you believe in that nonsense. You go and solve the front end. Don't be so rude, Duncan. Is the engine still here, Rusty? The valley flooded in the days following the accident. And by the time it had cleared, a rescue would have been both difficult, and given the fact the railway never had much longer to go anyway, pretty pointless. So, they did the only thing they could. They left him and his crew buried in the marsh. How awful. The railway became a popular nature walk, and on more than one occasion, People who have ventured out toward the bridge late at night have heard the sound of an engine at work. It's not unusual. We do night runs on our railway all the time. It's not so usual when there are no rails for an engine to run on. There was one notable incident the driver knows of. Why couldn't we have come in daylight? This place has been shut for months. Oh, it's a bunch of bureaucratic the boy still in the hands of the official receiver and all that nonsense. Demolition mob are gonna dispose of this not themselves. But we've gotta get what we can while there's still time. We're gonna get our lot off that island iron bridge. Ian, am I going nuts? What are you just hear, Savages? Sounds like a train. Well, blow me, it is a bloody train! Quick, get outside! Then the two men watched, and as the engine moved a set of loaded trucks across the bridge, they were astounded. They had been fully convinced that the railway had closed long ago, and that the engines had all been set for scrap. Must be working the mines out. And then, gradually, the engine's sound came fainter and fainter, and then it 
vanished. What on earth just happened? Oh, I could have sworn I saw. Oh. Oh, that's not a pleasant thing to have to think about. I may be a thief, but I wouldn't wish that on nobody. Here, lad, lad. Take it out. Let us... Let us look at this momentous occasion. And for the traumatic experience that it is. Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. What's a bloody man? I'd never seen someone have a religious conversion before. I think this experience has taught me to give up my life for crime before someone else gets hurt. I think for me it'll be the cross from now on. I, I have found my saviour in Jesus Christ. Long may, well, not believe exactly, but long may prosper. The two scrap merchants fled. At first, no one believed them, but that particular spot has become popular with campers, and many people say they've seen the engine trying to cross that old iron bridge. Well, I believe you. And well you should. Many a workman will tell you that when the moon is full and high over the old iron bridge, you can see the little engine and its crew trying to make it home. But it never reaches the other side. Ha! Rubbish! That bridge is as tame as a pet rabbit. Ghosts indeed. <laughs> never mind him, Peter Sam. Same old Duncan, you know. But I'll tell you this much. He would have a fit if he ever saw the ghost. Here, yeah, Rusty, that's a brilliant idea! What do you have in mind? You wait and see. I think Duncan's crew are worth in on this. The next day, the two crews spoke to one another while Duncan was ready by a fit. You'll do it tonight. Now, I've got the brick for you here. You must wait for our signal to drop it. This will put the wind up, Duncan. I'll whistle as we come towards the bridge, but I'll give you time to move out from the siding. Once they had agreed upon a plan, they set to work. Peter Sam went to arrange some coaches, Rusty took a permanent way train to the wharf, and Duncan took his empty stone trucks to the quarry. His driver made sure, as part of the plan, to cross the old iron bridge. In the valley, Peter Sam whistled loudly, and the echo carried up to the Iron Bridge. What do you have quivering for? It's only Peter Sam. I'm oh, no quivering. All the same, he kept thinking of Rusty's stone. And when they made it to the quarry, he was keen to leave. And Rusty will take my favourite place in the shed when you come back from Easter Horror. No, we can't. Think and draw his orders. Let's bring them back tonight. Duncan's crew could see their plan was working. His anguish was as plain as the lines on his boil. Dust by the time they set off, and with every clatter of his wheels on the track, it grew darker and darker. The mists were rising in the valley and swirling around the old iron. The moon was full and bright, and the rail shrieked loudly on corners as Duncan's trains clattered. Rusty was wrong. There's no such thing as ghosts. There's no such thing as ghosts. There's no such thing as ghosts. He whistled nervously as he passed the water. That's a signal. Let's go. Peter Sam uh, moved forward from the siding, eager to scare Duncan. 
Duncan's driver carefully stopped the train halfway along the bridge as a shrill whistle echoed around them. <gasps> what was that? Through the mist, Duncan could see flickering lights drawing closer and closer to the bridge. To Duncan, it looked like a steam engine. The engine whistled again. And Duncan's driver went to drop the brick from the side of the bridge. Duncan stood in a mesmerized horror of the lights, and the whistle echoed around them again. The puffing got louder and louder, with a hissing of steam and a clutter of trucks on the rails. But as quickly as it appeared, the lamp faded, and the silhouetted engine vanished from the mist. What was that? It's a ghost! Chamber back! Chamber back! Never mind, nothing was born in the shame, lost you can have all no curses, there's branches of daylight! Chamber back! Duncan reversed his train back to the water, howling loudly with his eyes closed. Uh, Duncan? Ah, it's Corpus! Uh, don't be daft, it's Peter Sam. Duncan opened his eyes gingerly. Peter Sam was waiting in the siding by the water tower, looking worried. Ah, uh, what you all still doing here? I thought you were going to follow us across. What? What do you mean, follow us? We were trying to play a trick on you, Duncan. And they explained their plan to him. The problem to the answer is when we couldn't get out of the siding. The points are stuck fast and against us. Yeah, it must have happened when we passed you on the way down. So, that was all a trick. Ha! Ha! I knew it was nonsense. Yes, but why have you come back then? I heard a lot of whistling from the bridge. We thought that was you. We only whistled the once for the first signal. We dropped the brick and heard the big splash you made. It was really effective, wasn't it, boy? Aye. Uh, if you believe that sort of thing. <laughs> Hell, we didn't drop anything over the bridge. Eh? Yeah? How could we? It's a ten minute walk there and back to here. Besides, look at we, can we never make a bigger splash and have a break? They all paused, reflecting. I... I thought I saw an ancient lights. I saw it too. I thought it was you, Peter Sam. It was Peter Sam. Tell him. Please tell him. You can't think me. You don't think. <laughs> They didn't want to think any further on it. The two crews fixed the points and the cavalcade puffed for home, cautiously trundling over the old iron bridge. Ha! <laughs> but even though Duncan kept saying that all the way home to the shed, It didn't stop him from begging the thin controller to give him a second chance at shunting the following day in Peter Sam's place. There's no such thing as ghosts. I don't think he sounds very convinced. Do you? Sam. 
Then who did Duncan see washing those trucks onto the old iron bridge? I can only assume we'll never truly know.